what's going on everyone and welcome to Movie Emporium's new review of Out Stealing Horses, the newest film from director Hans Petter Moland. Uh, before we begin, please hit that subscribe button to join Movie Emporium, hit that notification bell at the top to find out what's coming next. Hey, if you like this video, cool, hit that like button and comment below on any video that you watch, including this one. So Out Stealing Horses is based off the book by Pierre Petterman. Uh, it basically stars a character named Tron, who is actually in the wraparound story, star is starred by Stellan Skarsgård. And Tron is a character who is uh, very traumatized, very kind of at wit's end. Uh, he just recently lost his wife in a car accident, so he's moved himself to this isolated Norwegian like location, where it's just basically him and like one other person. The funny thing about that is, is the other person is somebody from his past named Lars, and so this movie, similar to like Stand By Me with the tragedy that happens in the story, is basically shooting him back to 50, when he was 15 years old, when he went to stay with his father, and his father is played by Tobias saint -Domain. And of course, he is played by uh, John Raines as a 15-year-old. And it basically shows uh, Tron as just a young kid who is basically coming of age. He's not only having fun living with his father, cutting down trees, working and doing exciting stuff with, you know, shedding and stuff like that with the trees and stuff like that. But there's an incident dealing with another family who loses one of their kids. And in the process, because it's coming of age, he has to deal with that situation. He has to, he doesn't know what to do with it. The mother is kind of, you know, at loss, but she has kind of a, a secret that she's holding with uh, Tron's father. And he starts to see it and he starts to become kind of attracted to her because she's like the only woman in this place. And you just start to see like the slowly inklings of a kid who's starting to slowly become a man. And that was, that's what makes this movie kind of work is that, you know, authenticity of how kids operate when they're 15, 16 years old, coming from adolescence, pubescent era to the man growing up and, you know, finding certain things attractive and stuff like that. But it's also about human nature when it comes to like how he loves his father, how he wants to be with his father. When he eventually goes home, it feels like he's empty inside. But it's also about the betrayal and the kind of disappointment that leads into the situation that leads into the end of this movie with his father. But with that said, this movie just feels so authentic with what it's trying to do that it becomes a little... I don't want to say boring, but it comes it becomes a little stale and a little kind of plotting in a lot of places. And that's just because you're kind of centered in this one location for, you know, almost an hour and a half. And it's just kind of, you know, there are certain times where they're just cutting trees or they're not doing much or they're just kind of, you know, wandering back and forth. And it feels really simple. It's kind of like if you're, you know, if you're literally living without power or internet or cable, it's that type of situation where you're just... You're living in the elements, you're, you know, cutting down trees, you're, you know, killing animals for f food and stuff like that. So it can get a little cumbersome. I think this movie is a little too long, probably 15, 20 minutes too long. But I think overall, I think the characters are strong and they work really well. I think Tobias Santelman, who is the father, is actually really good in this movie. He really feels authentic as a father who really cares for his son, but is in a situation that is also revealed about him in World War II and Nazism, stuff like that, between him and the mother of the kid who passed away, who is played by uh, Dania Kurikic. Uh, I think there's an authenticity there. I think the mother is really interesting and really kind of... Uh, a woman who is just at a loss, you know, because they lost their child and stuff like that. So to see these characters play off one another is just kind of neat and kind of nice and kind of just fun and entertaining and in a point of like a coming of age story. But with that said, the movie's also gorgeous to look at, and that's thanks to Hans Petter Molin's style of filmmaking. There's very naturalistic lights, you know, everything feels authentic when it's like nature of how it's set with the uh, the cabins and stuff like that. I really feel like something they built out, out of scratch with their own hands. To when they're cutting down the trees, there's some moments where they do kill animals in this movie, which might you know upset a few people. But there's also, like I said, you know, during the snow sequences, which is you know Hans. Petter Mullen's like motif where you really kind of feel that he really loves the snow because you've seen it in a couple of his other films like Cold Pursuit but it has like a sense of wonderment it has a sense of realistic feel to it that really gives it a good edge to type of filmmaking so 
I really do think this is a true step up from what he was doing with Cold Pursuit, which was a remake of his own film he did with Stalin Skarsgård because he's worked with Stalin Skarsgård in pretty much every movie he's ever worked with. So he's like Martin Scorsese in a lot of ways. But just overall, I think the movie's enter entertaining. It's not going to be for everyone because it is subtitled. So there, it's in its own language that is, you know, speaking. And uh, it's going to be a movie that is going to divide people on the fact that it might be a little tedious and a little boring for some people. But I think if you can kind of sit back and go on the adventure that this kid goes on and just kind of revel in the situation at hand and realize that people kind of go through these situations and how realistic feels. And when you get into like the Stalin Skarsgård stuff and him having to deal with a similar situation with a tragic event. I think you can get a lot out of this movie. So I was pleasantly surprised by this movie. Uh, it is on VOD, streaming, you know, all that good stuff. So you do have to pay for it. But I think it's a movie worth watching. I think it's a movie that has a lot of heart and does definitely feels like an interesting storytelling uh, endeavor that Hans Petter Moland uh, was involved with. So once again, it's a pretty good film. So, but that's it. That's my take on Outstowing Horses. Uh, if you decide to see this movie, uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of it. If you read the book, tell me what you think of the book. Is it similar to the movie? Uh, like I said, a lot of times the movie versus the book is completely you know different and stuff like that. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Uh, hit that subscribe button to join Movie Emporium. Uh, if you like this video, cool. Hit the like button if you dislike it. You know, it is what it is. But also, notification bell at the top to find out what's coming next. But otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out.